Today the subject is about a TV buff. Besides being a TV buff, my guest today has so many other interesting things happening in her life which she's going to share with us and that's the reason why the show is called It's My Life. And today it's the life of my guest Radha Thomas. Hi Radha, welcome. Thanks. Nice to be here. Yes, tell me about why you're a TV buff. It keeps me sane watching television. TV keeps you yes, sane? Absolutely. That's the first time I've heard of that. It takes me away from uh, the very many things that I don't want to be involved in and I just okay. love watching TV. It's like an escape route? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Even what, for 5 minutes I like watching TV whatever. And uh, what are, what is the time you actually watch TV? I hate to admit it but probably many many hours in a day, maybe 4 4 hours a day. Okay, and what are those four hours like? Morning, evening, afternoon, night? No, not the morning. Usually, uh, in the evening after I come back from work. Ah, there so, is a work. Okay, there is unfortunately <laughs> work. <laughs> Somebody has to pay the bills. Yes, so, yes I I've just... been working for about thirty years, maybe more. I don't want to tell you how old I am here. Okay, no, forget But, it. Uh, Wait a minute. So we're television. going to talk about TV. Okay, t- yeah, exactly. All television. that work that you've I've done been, for thirty years, uh, we're going to talk later. Yeah, yeah. First, we're going It's to talk about. It's not even exciting. Yeah, TV is TV exciting. TV is exciting, <laughs> especially nowadays when I can record uh-huh. things on TV and just you know sort of beep out all the ads. It's okay. just bliss, absolute bliss. One more thing that's even better than. television is uh, iTunes so i download movies i download tv shows it's terrible i'm like a junkie <laughs> <laughs> really let's talk about this tv thing because i have a take on it i want to know if you think okay. the same because i'm also a tv buff okay that's why that's what i latched on to good thing to talk about i watch tv like you say after i go back home mm. and i have my favorite serials mm. do you have your favorite serials absolutely yeah. what are they Uh, Let's see if we are on the same crime. page. I like crime, so CSI, so Fox and, and Crime, all and all that you watch. Yeah, is it? and then you know, as I said, I download uh, TV shows on from iTunes and other places. Okay. So uh, whatever the latest uh, drama-related TV shows, I like watching uh, okay. those. So you know, uh, show that I've been watching. Actually, there's a new term that I discovered. It's called uh-huh. binge watching, okay. and I do a lot of that binge watching with you know a television screen. Mm-hmm. But binge watching is when you let's say get uh, three series of a TV show, like I, a show called The Good Wife, which I think there were. Oh, you'll watch a little of this, the, little of this, little. No, of no, that. no. I'll watch the whole thing. Huh. Only PP breaks, and then come back and watch. Oh. So you watch the whole thing till it's finished. So now in America, apparently, uh-huh. they have. Gotten onto the fact that many people are like me. They watch, you know, ten episodes at a time. You know, until okay, you can't okay. take it anymore. All right, all right. And you know, your <laughs> eyes are just, you know, tearing down, and then you go to sleep. Sleep. So oh. they make uh, these episodes so that you can watch them one after another after another. I just watched something called Last Resort, mm-hmm. which they've discontinued, but it was so thrilling and so exciting, and up till three in the morning, you know, watching, watching the whole TV. thing. Yeah. That was a last resort too. Yes, <laughs> it's great talking to another TV buff who knows more than what I know. I thought I knew quite a bit about TV, you know, watching TV, not doing TV films and things like that. And here is Radha sharing with me something about binge TV. My guest is Radha Thomas, who is a TV buff. Hey, wait a minute, she is so much more. But we'll talk about all that later. We'll get the TV thing out of this. TV thing can never, never. go out. Ha uh-huh. <laughs> TV is always there for me. Okay. So you were saying you were watching this binge TV where you look at something for 10 continuous Whatever, hours. Whatever you know, let's say it has a There's no commercial episodes. break nothing there. No, there's no commercial break. <gasps> you know I just get up for essentials okay. and come back to okay. watch. Okay. But it's great fun. It's uh, distracting. Mm-hmm. Uh, it takes you away, you know, it's like escapism okay. and you don't have to you know go sit in a movie theater. I don't like those intermissions. That's yeah. why one of the main reasons I don't like to go to the movies because they always have this intermission. Okay. So I can just watch uninterrupted and very fortunately uh, fortunately for me my family is the same so uh So everybody my, is watching TV together. Yeah, we are watching. We all like the same, same thing mostly. Oh, that's We're nice. mostly the the two men in my life, my son and Ramji who is my significant other, they like to watch uh, some really stupid shows like this Jack Black and all these you know Mm-hmm. comedy stuff th- that okay which one is another guy will farrell jack black and all these people i can do without so okay. i don't watch that I, that's when i do my writing or mm-hmm. composing when they oh, watching oh that's the next part of you else. okay okay yeah. so but you know crime uh, is what i like watching mm-hmm. so i'm an expert on forensics so you're now. more into english uh, 
only english anyway we'll put tv aside now and but do you think it's good for children to watch tv i mean i'm before i my son uh did nothing but watch tv okay. all the time mm-hmm. giant he, he does online marketing okay that's what he does but uh he, he's on his way to doing his mba and he seems to be doing fine in life despite the tv in watching ordinate number of hours he spent <coughs> watching tv so mm-hmm. I, i think it's all right okay now i think we've said enough about television rather now let's get serious please and tell me about yourself um what do you mean about myself you didn't like me to s- introduce you as a multidimensional person because you were telling me it sounds very pompous i don't think so multidimensional is just a label like you say this is apple juice or mango juice okay um i so, guess the reason i didn't want you know to have that sort of a label is because i think most of us do many things not just one particular thing and uh, the focus for some people is on one particular thing but at the same time they're doing other things they, you know uh, people are uh, you they do a job for instance mm-hmm. whatever the job may be they like to do yoga in the evenings or they may like to play tennis or they may like to write or they may like to paint or they may like to do needlework or whatever it is so most people do more than one thing Uh I've been very fortunate uh, in my life that I've been able to pursue these things yeah. in a way that uh you know I I get more than just a hobby out of it. No that's so, what I was going to tell you yeah. too. Most people yes do so many things so they're just doing it to fill in their time. Yeah. I, I'm, But for I'm me, sure you like yes. For me it's a very serious and uh, it's very challenging and very exciting. It's what keeps me going. So know? let me find out from you. how you started your journey in life i mean i'm not asking you about when you were 5 years old and all that but where did you study what did you um, study i went to college in uh, delhi lady sri ram and uh, that's when i discovered um, music and uh, performing performing live so i met uh, uh, members of a band called human bondage as many years ago and the band was a successful band that performed all over in india and i was very fortunate that i became their lead singer and oh okay <coughs> yeah and we performed in many uh, are you trained in music or it's yes. just a hobby uh, no no um i have been trained in hindustani classical music really yeah drupad okay you mean in hindustani classical yes drupad is a gharana or is it a raga it's a form, or what? no drupad is a type of singing that is a uh, unlike other uh styles of hindustani music okay. it's usually sung by men and it's very rhythmic oh, and wow. i i studied that particular form of you know growing up of course i was listening to carnatic music which is what uh, was played in my house and jazz because mm. my mother was a jazz buff but i kind of took to this drupad style of singing because i wanted to use it within the framework of blues and rock and roll and jazz and the kind of things that i was doing at the time okay. it was kind of experimental so the the music lent itself uh very nicely to the synthesis to the fusion that uh, i had wanted to create um so i studied that kind of music from uh, fariduddin dagar that was his name specifically for this in bombay okay. you know the, then later on i travel i mean i've done a lot of traveling from delhi to bombay to why your father was in the armed no, no, forces or something no no nothing to do my father it was me okay. uh, i left home uh, uh my stepfather is a journalist so uh okay he at the time in delhi he was with the statesman oh. um uh, anyway but this is my own life so i okay. left home and i was married quite early in life mm-hmm. and we traveled with this band um all over india okay. and i was studying music doing all these things then i went to america uh when i was about 21 and uh, it was and you were in shriram college before that before that yeah okay so i didn't finish i you know um quit college mm-hmm. so that i could pursue singing okay and hey say that again because many parents these days a lot of youngsters like to you know follow their dream yeah. if music is one of their dreams i don't think they should quit college <laughs> i think they should <laughs> you defeated complete. my purpose yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry i think they should finish college and i want my son to finish his mba you didn't finish college no i didn't okay but it's okay huh. but uh, i was lucky very lucky and luck doesn't happen to everybody all the time you know mm-hmm. so uh, and i don't know how lucky i am in in the sense that i'm not a multi millionaire or and i'm a woman so i mean people take care of me also you know you, so they do i yes, thought it was the other way around no they do <laughs> you you're so, used and abused and all that's what everybody mm, says not me thank god okay so i've been as i said i was very fortunate so 
I uh, was okay. Let me just take digress a little. Sure. You studied in Lady Shram College in yes. Delhi. Which year was it, Radha? I don't want to tell you. Uh, it was in the early seventies. You know something? We should carry our age with pride. No, no, I do. It was in the mi- uh, mid before I went to America. It was in. Tell me the uh, year. I went to America. Tell me the year. Seventy-six. So before that. Somewhere in the seventies. Yeah, mid seventies. Okay. What was the safety issue of women in Delhi at that time? That's why I'm asking you. Ah, uh, I can tell you that my mother used to be terrified because I was running around in the night to nightclubs by myself in autos uh-huh. and coming back, and nothing ever happened. The same thing in New York when it was at the height of uh, uh, dot busters and all that. Dot. I never wore dots, so. Yeah. uh they didn't you know <laughs> that didn't happen to me but you know it was a dangerous city at one point in the 70s and the early 80s uh-huh. and i was also still a, a performing musician and which means you travel at night you know because most of the shows are in the evening at, at night. yeah okay. and i didn't have escorts all the time to take me here or there so i was alone so i'm the wrong person to ask because it may may have been a different scenario for other people mm. but for me it was quite safe i mean I, there i was performing in singing in nightclubs yeah going out at night and uh, nothing you never felt me. threatened no you didn't feel intimidated by no. nothing no is it because you yourself was was a very brave courageous kind of a woman <laughs> no, <or>? no. <laughs> no i i think that people won't mess with me you know? that's why i'm asking you that i don't think i'm brave or courageous maybe stupid but number one i'm by indian standards i'm tall So I'm five foot seven. So body language matters. I think so. You're five foot seven. I'm five foot seven. Okay. And uh, I'm not, as you can see, I'm not exactly scrawny. Okay. I never have been. So uh, and I also, I'm not intimidated. I, I'm just not. So okay. Uh, I, nothing. I mean, it doesn't matter. You know, a gang of ten can overpower me just as easily. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm luckily nothing like that happened. Okay. You didn't consciously, because your mother was terrified. You didn't consciously do something to stay away from what could be dangerous situations. No, on the that. contrary, I think I must have provoked it by wearing, you know, micro mini skirts and this ah, and that. So, okay, okay. But it didn't matter. Those are not the reasons why people come and attack you. By the way, you look. Oh, it's it's something else. It's some kind of violence, a violent uh, streak that is in the head and heart and mind and body of the attacker. So I don't think that you can. by wearing by looking pretty you can't provoke people into murder you know i don't think that i don't think it works that way so i wore short dresses i uh back then i used to smoke cigarettes so all the things that t- traditionally typically even today in india are considered bad girl behavior i was guilty of all of that but mm-hmm. despite that and despite uh leading that sort of a you know rock and roll life i didn't get attacked i didn't get raped i didn't get uh beaten I, and i certainly didn't get murdered so my take on that is that it is not these things that cause rage in men it's not these things at all it's something else you know and that something else is maybe the way they were brought up maybe it's mob mentality maybe it's uh you know the kind of the kind of strength that you get in a crowd not necessarily even a mob but even four men together you know like the construction worker syndrome this happens in uh, in new york where i spent 20 years of my life where there'll be these you know 20 guys uh, digging holes or laying manholes or whatever and when a girl walks by they'll whistle they'll hoot and they'll holler but if the guy is alone he's not going to do anything so it uh, it's you know the dynamic is a societal one I, it's hard to put your finger on one you know there's luck there's so many things that's conspire in this universe to create a situation so i, I don't think it's one thing okay you know that's a very good insight you gave rather it wasn't a part of my talk oh, I'm sorry, today yeah. no no don't be sorry i'm very happy it came out because here is somebody like you who has done these things and you think it's nothing to do with being I a victim really don't. it's not a, it so it's not a woman's fault if she becomes a victim because right now everybody is talking about oh you because you did this it happened to you because you didn't do this it happened to you it's insane i it's mean that kind of talk is uh i always believe and i f- i feel very strongly that when you uh, say something like if a woman wears uh, short 
dresses or a low cut neckline she will provoke some man into attacking her it says very little i mean it says it speaks very badly of men that they have no self control whatsoever so, and i don't think that's the way men are because i have met several men in my life in fact i've written a book called men on my mind and that's not the way men behave but there is some dynamic as i said a group dynamic or something to do with growing up in a particular way that causes this kind of anger and they don't do it necessarily to women yesterday i was reading in the paper that uh men are raped too by other men not by women so uh it's, it's just a, kind a, of a, a power a, trip not only a power trip i think some depravity or something something that happens to yeah. people i mean for centuries it's ever since uh, i guess history has been recorded men have always tried to subjugate everyone around them whether it's other men or other castes or other races or whatever it is you know that's part of the mental makeup of of a man i guess i don't know and so if you can if you you know give that power to someone they will take it and they will most likely misuse it but if you can uh, keep some of it for yourself and you know contain yourself in your surroundings i think it should be okay i mean despite all that something can terribly go wrong oh, yeah. you know you never know i mean i was in in the ocean swimming peacefully when a wave knocked me down and my leg uh, i tore the my anterior cruciate ligament so what i'm saying is that anything can happen to anybody at any time but you can watch out for yourself okay okay sara sara exactly yeah. okay you said that you finished with lady shri ram you didn't finish college but you finished with lady shri yes, ram I college did, yeah. and then you went to way to study no i went to the, america to to uh, play in a band or sing in a band actually um, what happened was that uh, i was in bangalore at the time strangely mm -hmm. with the band and uh, and when you say band this is a group who plays different uh, and you're together it's a band meaning it's a group of people that uh, come together under one name, uh, name. to perform a kind of music together i mean today i have my own band yeah uh, and then we do a certain particular kind of music so back then it was a different band led by my then uh, my ex husband uh, it was his band okay and uh, we were in bangalore and uh, there, uh, at that time there was a man called niranjan javeri who uh -huh. uh, formed something called jazz india uh -huh. a long time ago and he'd heard of me and heard of my singing and he came to bangalore to see if he could audition me to represent india in uh, in europe in some jazz festivals and he you know i mean i was all nervous here in bangalore uh, in this little dive it's it's still there it was called chinlung uh, today i don't know what it is but uh, it was you could play music there and many people say they've come and heard me sing there um, many people that you probably know today in bangalore i don't remember any of it it's but like they remember you they remember me uh, people like prasad and prem koshi and all i i really can't remember you anything. are five seven You are not scrawny, I, <laughs> and you sing well. Of course, they'll remember you. Yeah, probably and short skirts, maybe. That's yeah. What it was. Oh right. I don't. Th I'm not going to say that. So, uh, but anyway, uh, then I went off to America to uh, hope. I, I wanted to sing. I wanted to make my career singing. Okay. But that didn't happen because the kind of music uh, that I liked singing, jazz. is not a very popular form of music and maybe that's it maybe i didn't pursue it hard enough maybe mm -hmm. i didn't have at that time the drive to push it through because uh you know i'm one of those tv watchers as i told you <laughs> earlier <laughs> that so, is your main tag tv watcher <laughs> so i didn't push hard you mean enough. way back then from then you've been yes, a buff yes okay. yes okay ever since television was invented i think you've been there <laughs> <laughs> so i didn't really push hard enough so i ended up doing a lot of other things in america but music has always been you know there underneath so i was performing as well as i had a series of jobs i'm really curious to know what other things you did in new york i worked in a travel company mm -hmm. i was a tour guide and we went all around the world to uh, australia new zealand and mm. fiji and china and japan and hong kong and all these places as a tour guide free so that was free and, and being paid also for the job i was paid for it oh you're lucky and i was you know and you get lots of tips too as a tour guide you're not lucky free because the 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 tourists uh generally you know geriatric americans very picky very uh demanding would pick on me and demand things of me as i took them all around the world and uh i didn't really know anything about the rest of the world it was all organized but um, that's what i did and then after that um uh, after i got kind of tired of tra traveling that was for 
quite a few years. And then uh, I had a boutique uh, in on Long Island where I sold clothes. Uh, Made by you or something? No, no, no. Uh, many clothes from from kind of like the Orient, India, uh-huh. Egypt, Morocco, okay. and pla- places like that. Uh-huh. So when you went traveling like this, you also found these? I mean, I noticed these things, but no, mm. I found all these things right there in America. You can get, you can have an elephant delivered to your doorstep okay. in America if you want. So <laughs> everything is available okay. there. And after that, I worked in an art publishing company. So, What's an art not, publishing company? It, it, uh, we published art, um, art prints actually. Okay. Uh, you know, Originals, you get them reprints. Re- reprints. And some of them were, you know, some limited edition prints mm-hmm. and serigraphs and lithographs and a regular art prints that were sold uh, in the stores. So that was a company that I worked for. Um, and uh, that was for a few years, maybe five or six years. It was kind of interesting. because. But what a, kind of job do you do there as a marketing person? Uh, everything, actually, because it was not a very big company. And uh, marketing, a lot of it, I traveled to trade shows all around the United States, trying to sell it to uh, wholesalers, that sort of thing, as well as uh, identifying new artists, you know, that uh, mm-hmm. would be good. It was it was interesting, but I, my heart really wasn't in it. And then uh, I came back to India and to Bangalore, which uh, I wasn't born in Bangalore. I was born in Chennai. But my grandfather moved to Bangalore, I think, right after independence and uh, lived in Maleshwaram, where my family set up house, so to speak. So that's where I considered home. And uh, my grandfather was the first chairman of ITI. Mm-hmm. Uh, telephone industry. Telephone industry. Okay. And in fact, from what the, the legend has it, that we got the first telephone in the whole country, but no one to call because nobody else had a telephone. <laughs> oh my God, what a situation. <laughs> so it's funny. I mean, they're all dead now, but... Uh, yeah, I know, but uh, it, it is history. Yeah? That's yeah, your lineage. History. Come yeah, on. It is true. Every time the bell goes, you know... In tring, fact, tring. there are pictures of him with Nehru and all this kind yeah, of thing. Okay, so. but more than that, it's Tring Tring, who's there? What <laughs> What was his name? Your grand- Natarajan, Professor okay. R. Natarajan. All right. So Tring Tring, who's there? Natarajan. Who's there on the other line? The telephone operator. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> else has a phone. Nobody else has a phone. Oh, God. So it was kind of funny. But uh, then I came back to Bangalore and uh, worked with Ramji, whom you know. Yeah. Um, in his company, which was called... Bangalore this fortnight for many, many years until uh, News Corp invested in the company. So that means now you moved into journalism. Yes. I had always been writing uh, songs, okay. uh, brochures, various things that one needs in... In promoting you know, any product. Any or product. Okay. So writing was not a problem. And as I said, uh, <clears throat> the family was the kind of family that, you know, encouraged all this kind of thing. And uh, so then I, I, you know, turned to journalism and I loved it. So here in Bangalore, I mean, I, it was, I loved it pretty much as much as I love singing. So, uh, and I had an opportunity to do a lot of investigative journalism here in Bangalore, which I really, really liked. And uh, that's about it. I mean, and now here I am talking what, to you on television. What about your band now? How did... Oh, I have... A, uh, yeah, oh. Throughout it was there. The, the no, band I had fever different. was there. The, no, I was... Constantly performing uh, whenever I could, not constantly, whenever I could. Okay. Uh, every couple of years with Gerard Machado, who's a Bangalore musician, and other people in some, you know, like the Bangalore Haba and this and that, mm-hmm. different. But I, have, I hadn't sort of um, taken it seriously that I really wanted to commit to it. And then suddenly, strange thing happened. I was watching something on YouTube and I saw this piano player his name is Aman Mahajan and he lives in Bangalore and something about the way he played I called him up he came over home and we formed a band it's Mm -hmm. a band called Ankh and it has my name in it and that was uh, two years ago two two and a half years ago then we've been performing regularly steadily several times a year traveled all over uh, India we haven't traveled abroad yet and actually uh, I'm really delighted because a couple of days ago I got a call from the ICCR uh, the Indian Council, Council for Cultural, Cultural Relations. Yeah. And they're holding a jazz festival in Delhi next month. And they want my band to play and, you know, represent the country. It's an international So you're, you're a band, jazz band group? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's a jazz band. And it has six 
members in the band saxophone drums mm-hmm. guitar ramji plays guitar in the band oh really i didn't know he also plays yeah he's a jazz guitar player okay piano that was vocals. what attracted you to ramji actually no i think he became a jazz guitar after <laughs> jazz guitar <laughs> he got attracted he to yes. okay <laughs> he was the other way around okay we recorded an album last year mm-hmm. released in uh, september and i believe radio wala has a copy of it so you can actually play it on the air um i think they even covered your uh, yes they did a live performance, performance which was fantastic yeah the album is a, it's called i only have eyes for you and i think you like that song lovely the, the song okay. called i only have eyes for you it has a little indian uh, influence Flavor in it so i it. think you like it yeah i'm so sure so maybe you can play that so we did this album mm-hmm. and uh, i've been very fortunate again that it's received good reviews uh, not just in india but all over the world why do you put everything down to your luck and your fortune and things like because that because where goes I, your hard work rather uh, i'll tell you it's not enough hard work just doesn't cut it okay because there are so many musicians so many writers so many people competing for the tiny little spot in the sunlight so really i honestly believe that luck I mean talent and all these things for sure but uh, I'm not the world's best singer by any stretch of imagination in fact the way I sing today is probably far worse than than uh, when Prasad Bidapa used to hear me sing at Chinlung but whatever it is today uh, it's being played on maybe about 130 radio stations in 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 the US so this is this I think is luck It's not always luck. Okay, what you say is right to be at the right place at the right time. The right person should and hear you up. and yeah. you g- that's the word. Not luck so much as not giving up. Yeah. Stick to itness it's called. Yeah, that's true. Okay? Whether you you know it, somebody asked me how many people listen to your show? You're doing this every week. I said I don't care. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I I'm performed to two people in the audience because they didn't show up it's not the most world's most popular. but it was a uh, rehearsal for you yeah Isn't and it? i we get into the band not just me the whole band gets into it with as much passion as if it was a thousand house. crowd or something like exactly. that yeah i think it's the uh, chaska of doing it not so much as how many people are listening to you i mean it's wonderful if there's an audience i keep saying we don't make a lot of money performing uh, music we hardly make any money but if people are clapping it's fantastic oh, yeah. the other night when radio wala was there recording it was a lovely evening because there were lots of people people were into it they didn't want to let us go i mean that's what makes it that's the reason why i do it yeah, yeah it's fantastic tell me how is jazz kind of picking up now or something or i don't know is, yeah maybe does music have a seasonal thing about it like sometimes this music is very popular no, nothing like so, that no. it, jazz, is it seamless the any music any time kind of a thing i mean i guess so but you know one has to um step back and be realistic about the role music plays in people's lives you know and that is it's incidental it's generally a background uh, activity so uh for a musician to make that commitment to music is with this knowledge that look people don't really care too much about you know they listen to it and if someone yeah. comes up with something more exciting they'll start talking but how do you uh, explain the success of you know singers like uh, sonu nigam and shaun and but now you have upcoming youngsters singing and whether it's in classical carnatic or hindustan there are a lot of young software engineers and all who are singing and you know giving kacheris and things like that see i don't fall into that category at all because i do not perform popular music of india so the mm. kind of music that i do uh i will never be as popular as any of these people that you mentioned no i'm I, not talking about yeah. popularity i'm just saying no the kind of see when i can only talk for myself yeah. and that is the kind of music that i do is complex it's uh not readily appealing to so the ear so is it particular to some particular country which is yes. very where is it very popular it's it's i no 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 i'm sorry it's not popular anywhere in the world really yeah it's really not because why they call, why do they call it all the jazz and you know every i mean you know because it's hard to understand mm-hmm. hard to uh perform and uh appeals to a very select few people okay. what is the core usp of jazz what is it like it's, it's like complexity oh yeah okay. and the fact that it's not hummable you know instantly mm. and foot tappable instantly it requires a mind okay. to uh, like it so uh that's that's the reason why i like it is very challenging and that's the reason why any of the band the musicians in my band are the same way they're all i guess it's an intellectual form of music you know okay. and uh it's not indian but what i'm trying to do mm. 
<clears throat> I'm not really even consciously trying to do it. It happens mm-hmm. uh, as a sort of synthesis of who I am, which is, I mean, I'm an Indian woman, an Indian woman. I've grown up in India. Indian culture is very much... You've learned Hindustani classical. Yes. And you're singing jazz. And I sing jazz. So there is a little bit of the Indian in my music as well. Oh, so I it's see. a it's like I mean I don't know if you know enough uh, you know about this for instance Brazilian music okay has come to play a very important part in jazz. African music has come to play a very important part in jazz because those influences mm-hmm. you know jazz opens its arms it's you know doors wide uh to absorb influences. So it's not already composed music. Mm, no, it's Com- it's improvised. It's there, improvised. There could be a part like, you know, my best way to describe it would be like a Hindustani class, not Carnatic, but mm-hmm. a Hindustani, Hindustani. classical. Okay. Uh, where you have uh, the head of a song and then there's a lot then of Then you come on with your own innovations, it's nuances. Similar thing. Oh, the only difference is, whereas in Hindustani music, it's music, it's one raga. Okay. This uh, involves a lot of more, much more complex uh melodic and uh, rhythmic structures where you have to contend with changing mm-hmm. tones mm-hmm. you know uh, quick changing tones so it's very challenging and it's okay. a, the kind of study that you do till the day you die that's why you know it keeps me engrossed okay i don't read and write music you know i'm, I'm i guess i'm a total illiterate whether it's uh, a school of uh, <laughs> lsr or school of music but uh, you have to study it uh-huh. In whatever manner it is, whether it's lis- orally, a u r, you know, or uh, by reading. Reading. It. It. So you have to study it. You have to uh, memorize things. Mm-hmm. You have to uh, understand what happens over what. You know. But that's also the basic grounding of it. Is also like do re mi fa sol la ti ti. Yes. That also has and the same. Everything is based on a scale. In the scales. You know? Everything okay. is based on a sound. So what do you want to tell me about jazz? Mm-hmm. I told you there's something special, and you said it's a, uh, it's it's a very innovative music. Yeah, and it's a difficult form of music oh, to. Uh, so you like. compared it to Hindustani classical music, to, and to an, in in a in a sense, you know, I compared it to Hindustani classical music only in as far as improvisation. Yeah, that's what I meant. Okay. <clears throat> but um, do you find any thread at all of any rag of Hindustani classical music in jazz? Is there? It's not something. Uh, I'm just trying to find the right words to demonstrate the difference. Um, Indian music, Indian classical music, is. two dimensional okay you have melody and you have rhythm so that's a two dimensional form of music so you the, the performer is only focused on one melody which is on one scale okay and within that scale he can do whatever variations that the raga permits and the rhythm uh, when you have jazz and other forms of western music too but especially jazz th- there are harmonies you know so that's a third dimension mm-hmm. that takes it completely away from uh, the, what we just discussed with the indian classical music so it adds an it's like uh, another dimension depth. to the whole yeah, thing it's like okay. it's like adding depth you know to the music so it you take you can go inside the music with the the harmonies and that's what makes it difficult and uh, for someone who listens to indian classical music only and uh, or, or indian music only not even classical even film music it's it's a stretch it's very hard to appreciate jazz because harmonically it's complex and it keeps changing mm. and to just really un- get used to one sound it goes off into another you can't you know, there's no there's no getting, getting used, used to, to it okay. okay you have to be able to get used to the harmonic transitions you know rapid transitions so to a, to a, to many indian musicians and indian music lovers they think it's uh, a tonal they think it's uh, tuneless they think it's oh. abaswaram i oh, mean okay <laughs> uh, because they don't understand it and uh, conversely a uh, lot of western a lot of jazz musicians find it annoying to listen to indian music because it just drones on and on and on in one plane mm-hmm. so uh, you know what you have to do to be able to appreciate both forms is understand. open your mind understand first of all what it's all. Ears, yeah. yeah understand what it's all about let those things seep in and uh, then perform you know so today although there is uh, something called fusion music that's you yeah. know bandied about hugely it's really not fusing uh, western and indian music they have your basic raga with mm-hmm. some beats and all that and that's what uh, is fusion music in india that that people do but uh, the kind of thing that i like has to be harmonically complex thanks a lot radha thank you thank you for being with me on this show 